Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, then hi, I'm Monisha. In 2017, I decided to appear for PLAB exams. 2018, I passed my PLAB exams and I moved to England. I am an IMG from India and IMG stands for International Medical Graduate. I'm a junior doctor working here in London in the NHS. I'm currently doing my co-training in the specialty psychiatry here in London. Currently, I'm a CT1 that is co-training year one. I'm currently CT2, a co-training year two. And I'm currently towards the tail end of my core training oh my goodness i make lots of videos on this channel about so this is called img faqs i'm going to talk about all the leaves that you're entitled to what happens after plaque 2 everything about schengen visa all the different pathways to practice medicine here in the uk in today's video i'm going to be decoding few of the abbreviations and the terms that are used in nhs everybody wants to know how much does someone earn as a doctor here in the uk usmd versus plab or plab versus usmd yet another most requested video to talk about my love for psychiatry how to make your portfolio talk about uk doctor salary welcome back to the channel today is a wednesday and today is my first ever on call as a registrar literally cutting off the bullshit getting straight to the point that's what the vlog is about and as you can tell uh, my voice is shaking a bit because i'm a bit nervous about it i think it's always the first that scare you so hopefully it's going to get better from here i was speaking to my consultant yesterday in supervision and i was like oh my god i'm going to be on call tomorrow you know there's going to be mental health act assessments and I'm going to be covering a and &E and 136 suite as a registrar which obviously hasn't happened given I was doing my core training previously and my consultant goes like oh so you're going to have baptism by fire tomorrow then that's how it's going to be but I know that I've got a senior above me I've got a consultant on call as well so if anything were to happen or if anything that I'm unsure of then I know who to call my consultant's advice was that have low threshold to call the on-call consultant if you're unsure of anything there's a senior above you just call them to clarify things and that's what I'm going to be doing I've used a lot of terms which might seem alien to people who are watching my blog for the first time for context the way training works and when i say training that's residency in the uk works is that you first obviously go for your med school then you do foundation training which is equivalent to your one year internship that you would do in your home country outside of uk so foundation training is for two years which is when you rotate through all the specialities in medicine surgery psychiatry radiology gp you name it after that you pick a speciality of choice which you want to become a consultant in or you want to specialize in i obviously have always been interested in psychiatry and that's what i did for three years so i had three years of residency in psychiatry that's called core training and what happens within core training is you rotate through all the various subspecialities of psychiatry so i did general adult old age child and adolescent mental health disorders that scams learning disability early intervention services community inpatient and all of that and hopefully within those three years you would have made a decision what you want to kind of even further specialize in that would be a niche within that speciality and that's what i'm doing currently so that's three more years now after my core training so i'm doing specialty training in old age psychiatry the way on calls work as a registrar is that you are on a 24 hour on call which sounds a bit intense and it is in a way that you're covering the site for 24 hours so anything that co-trainee needs or any mental health 
impact assessments that come in or anybody that psychiatrically needs to be reviewed in A&E would be referred to the registrar on call. So psychiatry registrar on calls are non-resident so I would be doing my on call from home unless I'm called in but obviously it's a normal working day so if it was the weekend I would obviously be at home and doing everything so this is morning so I need to go into my regular work 9 to 5 and then have my on call from 5 p.m. till tomorrow morning 9 a.m. and then I'm expected to be in for my usual work day 9 to 5 tomorrow as well. It's actually worked out well for me this time around for my first on call because tomorrow I have got Health Education England HEE induction which is online and from home. Luckily I don't have to be in for my 9 to 5 tomorrow so after I finish my on call at 9 a.m. tomorrow I can be home and do my online induction for HEE. Obviously it's not going to happen every single time I have my on call so I would be expected to be in for my 9 to 5 after having done 24 hour on call. Obviously there's caveats to that. I'll get to that when that happens. So today's on call is pretty much I do my 9 to 5, 5 p.m. onwards I'm on call till 9 a.m. tomorrow and then I'm going to have my 9 to 5 tomorrow as usual work day which is going to be from home. Thanks Echi. So yeah so today is Wednesday we usually have academic teaching and balance group. So I'll go into my team base and from there I will go for balance group. For now I'm going to have my coffee and breakfast and then going to be reading through this book to revise and just consolidate information about mental health act assessments and capacity assessments and all that. One of the advisors from the seniors was that every time you do a capacity assessment or you do a mental health act assessment come back and read that section in the book so that it solidifies your knowledge and your memory on it and I'm going to take that advice given that it's obviously early days and I have to build my knowledge and confidence and all of that with it. That's what I'm going to do this morning whilst having coffee and breakfast and I have yak for six minutes straight I'm looking at this camera but I'll take you guys along with me that obviously goes without saying throughout today and tomorrow so yeah let's do the first on call as a registrar I never thought I would be saying these words when I started my YouTube channel and started making videos about day in my life or you know doctor life kind of thing in UK so yeah feels a bit surreal but also at the same time I'm nervous we'll see how it goes <music> Okay, I'm off to work now, followed by Balan Group, and I'll see you in a bit outside. I said that literally 10 seconds back, but I wasn't 10 seconds back. In video years, it was 10 seconds back, but actually it was almost 40 to 45 minutes back. So let's go for my first ever on call as a reg. I look so excited, but I freaking <laughs> bricks. It's bloody freaking pouring again. I've never ever experienced such a wet February in all these years. Like, what the heck? It's not freezing, it's just, you know that annoying rain. Ah, jeez, when is this rain going to stop? I don't mind the cold, I don't mind the freezing winters. I just don't like the rain. freaking windy. I don't think you guys can hear any of what I'm saying. While I'm commuting between sites, I thought I'll give you guys an idea as to what Balan Group is. Balan Group is pretty unique to psychiatry, where you have a facilitator, which is usually a psychotherapy consultant. We had that as a co-trainee, and now we obviously have that as a speciality trainee in Balan Group as well. And you can bring in any complex cases or any complex scenarios or situations. It just doesn't have to be cases. It could even be ethical scenarios, and it's a safe space to be able to talk about it. So yeah, so it's not really a place where you would sit and problem solve. It's an opportunity wherein you can bring in things that have been occupying your mind or things that have been worrying you. It's a non-judgmental space really. It's there for you to unload anything that's been weighing you down in terms of work, in terms of patience. And it's a confidential space. So yeah, that's what I've got today. And, and then after that, we've got a academic teaching and a meeting with the GPD who we'll just check in with new trainees to just see how the new trainees have been settling in really. Um, so yeah, that's what the day is going to look like. This is some 
somewhere around 4ish p.m. Okay, I spoke to one of the registrars for any kind of input or advice on my first on call, and her tip was just carry on with your day as is, and as and when you get called, kind of tackle it then instead of predicting how the on call is going to go. I think the thing with SPR on calls is that how uncertain they are, and you cannot really predict because if you are a SHO, you know you have set timings of when you're supposed to do your shift and when your on call starts and ends, and you're obviously going to be on site and everything. But as a registrar, you can't really predict how it's going to go and whether it's going to be a busy night, not so busy night. So she said, don't anticipate it and don't sit up till 1 a.m. hoping for a call or whatever. Just carry on with your day and then deal with it as and when things spring up. I finished a bit early. The plan is for me to go home now and then I'm going to wait to get called in. We shall see how the night goes. So I would be covering A&E, Section 136 feet, any seclusion reviews. The new admissions are dealt with by the co-trainee, but if they obviously have any kind of questions, they call the register on call, which would be me today. So let's go home and I'll take you guys along. Yeah, let's go back home now. Alrighty, it is 5.10 p.m. Officially, my on-call has started. So I have left my phone's ringing thing on. So in case they need to contact me, they can call me and I'm just going to be carrying my phone everywhere. It's this whole uncertainty, isn't it? It's just so unpredictable. This whole anticipation is something that I need to deal with. So we'll see how the on-call goes. I've also put alarms on my phone for the MDT meeting, which is going to be at 9.30 so that I can arrange everything to join in the meeting. For now, I am just going to relax and take it easy. I am currently reading this book, which is called The Housemaid. So it keeps my mind off the fact that I'm actually on call. Also, another amazing thing about this trust is that we get allowance for eating out or you know ordering coffee or whatever on your on call day and the budget is 20 pounds per on call so i have ordered some delivery i don't know why i'm craving for some moussaka so i've ordered some takeaway meals and that is on its way i'm not going to have it right now it's obviously just 5 pm so it's for later on in the night if i need something it's there in the fridge so that's about it for now we're just gonna sit and wait and and watch and hope for the best. Alrighty, so it is almost 7.30 p.m. I thought why not have early dinner which is homemade chicken shawarma just in case if post handover something comes up and watch some light-hearted tv we started watching the show called the marvelous mrs mason it just feels a bit odd that i'm on call and i'm sitting and watching tv and having dinner not complaining at all we'll see how the rest of the night goes but for now i'm just yeah soaking in all the relaxing downtime i have just because you never know what's going to happen Alrighty, got an update. Literally 15 minutes later since I switched on my camera. Haven't even finished my shawarma. I've just finished, not even one. I finished like three quarters of a roll. Got a call from the liaison psych nurse that we've got somebody in section 136 suite and I will have to go in to do the mental health act assessment for first recommendation. So I'm going to just wait for them to arrange for the amp and then go in. And whilst I wait for that, I'm going to have my dinner and continue watching. Alrighty, as you can see, it's 8.25 p.m. I'm currently calling for an Uber to go to the a and &E. Okay, it's three minutes away. Should I share it with you? Yeah. My cab is gonna arrive in two minutes, so I'm going to head out. Let's go. Let's go to a and &E. So I'm waiting for my cab to arrive. It's 1.45 a.m. and off we go home. I think it's 2.30 a.m. I am back home and the reason I am whispering is because Dean is asleep. So yeah, I actually went to do one mental health act assessment and by then there was someone else who was brought in by the police under section 136. They also needed to have mental health act assessment done. I sound a bit slow because my brain is a bit foggy. I haven't always rested. I have been working since 9 a.m. 
it's interesting how registration calls go i think i'm going to debrief on it tomorrow morning i'm going to go and rest at least stretch my legs we'll see how the rest of the night goes fingers crossed i think i'm going to talk about what happened really hopefully later on in the morning or if i get called in again then maybe for now i'm just going to value my free time so let's go get some sleep other people have looked at things like rotors um uh, maternity <laughs> kind of understand what's happening and also to, to get the Alrighty, this is the next morning, post on call nights. As you can tell, I am in bed with my laptop. So ideally the way on calls work as a ST in my current trust is that you're on call for 24 hours and the next day you're expected to be in at work for your 9 to 5. I know it's a bit odd. The STs in my previous trust did not have this, so it's quite interesting how it works over here. Coincidentally and luckily, what's happened today post my on call is that I have HEE, that's Health Education England induction for new trainees whether they're co-trainees or specialty trainees so that's worked out very well that i don't have to go into work so i've basically woken up in bed attending my induction online and that's what i'm going to do for the rest of the day today i'll take you guys along and maybe at the end of today's induction debrief as to what happened last night so let's crack on with the induction <music> Language, culture, integration, etc. But now it is 1 pm now and we have got a lunch break. We're doing the induction, so I thought I will heat up some moussaka. So that's for lunch. Whilst this is being heated up in the oven, let's chat about what the night shift was and everything about it. Alrighty. basically the way the night shifts work is that as an on-call registrar although i'm doing old age psychiatry during my on calls i would be covering old age and general adult both so anything that's not camps i'll be covering that the site i was on call for i would be covering the a e section 136 suite and the inpatient wards over there as well there is a co-trainee who is on site during on call so they have resident on calls like i did my co-training if you want to know what co-training kind of looks like what those on calls look like i will link up the videos over here so you can go and have a look in terms of specialty training your on calls are non-resident i'm not saying all trusts function this way the trust i'm working in functions that way so when i say non-resident you're sort of on call from home so there's any kind of queries any advice that any of the wards want in the general hospital or a e wants or the co-trainee wants they would be calling the registrar and the reason a registrar would be physically called in during their non-resident on call is for mental health act assessments and those are quite often that happen overnight or in the evenings or during weekends during the day you obviously have your day teams to be covering that so anything that's out of hours that has to do with mental health act assessments would be covered by the registrar on call last night when i got a call in i was from a &E, and the site liaison nurse called me saying that we have somebody who's been waiting for mental health act assessment and they have arranged for the amp and for the independent section 12 doctor as well i have hopefully talked about what mental health act assessments are early on in this video so you know what that is and who all are involved there's something that's really amazing about this trust that they have a handover meeting at 9 30 p.m which is attended by the day on call doctor the night doctor who's taking over the registrar it's the same registrar who's on call in the day and night which was me the on call consultant the site liaison team and the site coordinator as well which is pretty nice that everybody is on the same page as to what's happened in the day what is expected overnight who's waiting in A&E who needs to be seen all of that is discussed what the bed state looks like and everything so that was the meeting that I went in person and attended at 9 30 p.m obviously people who are sat from their homes and attending which is I think only the on-call consultant and rest of everybody was on site so we attended that during that handover meeting I got told that obviously you were called in to see somebody for mental health act assessments there's someone else who's come in as well okay I thought in my head I'll do one and then come back 
and by hopefully midnight i would be back home but that's not how on calls go you can never predict and that's one advice i wanted to give myself and anyone else who's listening that if you're doing an on call as a registrar do not predict it at all anyway so went in to do somebody's mental health act assessment and then finished that and then did someone else's as well i obviously don't want to be giving details as to what was the outcome or who the person was or what the presentation was because patient confidentiality and all that so not going to say all that after that i made my way up to the psych liaison team base to be able to do the documentation and also the legal paperwork if needed for any of these patients for the mental health act assessment that kind of finished at 2 a.m then i called for a cab and i came back home took a shower again and you guys saw me sitting on the floor and chatting for a bit then obviously put my phone on general mode and went to rest i don't think i fully rested because i was obviously sleeping with one eye open that in case i get called in again luckily did not get any calls after that i did get a bit of rest in you guys saw me i woke up in the morning and i've been attending my hee induction so hee is health education england and they are doing an induction for Co trainees and specialty trainees who started training. It's quite interesting because there's, you know, heads of lots of different trusts who are attending this induction. They're sort of presenting how they handle their training programs and what all services or what all bits they have set up in terms of trainee well being or in terms of training program, in terms of, you know, escalation, what really their training program looks like. So it's quite interesting to hear how other trusts function in terms of their post grad training. So that's going on. That's going to go on for the rest of the day so i'm going to crack on with that have my lunch and then carry on with my induction there's no point really filming moving from here because you'll just be watching me watching my induction yeah i hope you enjoyed this journey of being on call as an on call registrar so yeah this is the end of the vlog i hope you enjoyed watching this video of on call registrar whatever i don't know what i'm going to title it so we'll see i'm still a bit delirious given i haven't slept properly i think i probably went into deep sleep at 7 30 ish am when i finally relaxed i'm like okay even if i get called and i don't have to go in physically now it'll just be advice over phone so i think 7 30 am is when i properly properly rested and then i had to wake up for production that's the end of the video and i will see you next sunday on my channel until then look after yourself bye Mwah.